Hello everyone, Rich Wildman here, MSI Music Scene Investigation is on the air once again. Glad to have you with us. It's going to be a great time this week, in particular since actually spring has sprung here in the Midwest and I'm a happy camper. I'm tired of snow, I'm tired of it cold, I'm tired of all things having to do with winter and I'm finally able to to wear something other than a turtleneck that goes up to my ears. And, you know, it, it's just great being able to wear uh, short sleeves when you want to, you know. That's all I can say about it. Well, on today's show, however, we do have some great music that we're going to be putting in front of our panel. I say great because the artist took time to send it to us. Not a reflection of the content itself. That's up to the panelists to decide. See how I covered that, Ian? I'm, I'm pretty good at that nowadays. Yeah, yeah, I, I noticed how you covered that. I think everyone else did as well. Oh, there you go. It's it's why I do what I do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we're going to put that music in front of them, let them decide whether it's good or not, and uh, they'll give their review and critique of those songs. And they'll do so without knowing the name of the artist, the name of the song, or uh, anything about the music. They'll hear it for the first time when our studio audience hears it as well. So it's going to be very interesting to hear what they have to say about it. Now then, we do have a bit of unfinished business to discuss from last week. We're going to discuss that with Mr. Ian Husbands. You've already met him. Here he is again, Ian, over in London, England, with the England shirt on today. Ian, what's going on with that? Well, it's St. George's Day on, on Thursday, the 23rd. So I thought, you know, for everyone that's going to be watching this back on the, the recording on Thursday, happy St. George's Day. Well, happy St. George's Day to you, too. Buster. That day when we, when we venerate a, a, a Syrian-born man, born to, to Greek uh, aristocrats, who then went on to serve for the Roman army, uh, England. Why, why, do you, why do you celebrate such mix, mixed-up things there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Roman Catholic thing going on here. So yeah, he was a Roman soldier. It's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like the way here in the states, everybody gets a trophy, right? You guys just celebrate everybody over there. Yeah, well, apparently, if you look into it, this this whole George St. George thing, yeah, he's actually celebrated across the world as as a decent bloke. You know, uh, here in here in the Midwest, so, yeah. we don't celebrate him. I'm sorry. No, no, we don't take holidays for that kind of thing. Nothing like that. Who's yours then? Sort of like Saint Brad or something. No, we 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 <laughs> we, we don't we, we celebrate Ian Day. Fantastic, and so you so you should, really. <laughs> so what's going on over in England, Ian? Anything that we need to know about worldwide troubles that we can solve here on MSI? I'm working on a pretty cool video at the moment. Well, tell us about it. Well, I hold it like this whole idea of crowdsourcing and bits and pieces like that. So I've been looking into websites for us as MSI to use, as you know, Rich. Uh, and I stumbled across a website called Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And uh, basically, you can hire people to do practically anything as long as it's within the law and doesn't contain nudity um, to do something for a Fiverr. And if it's, you know, you need them to do slightly more than they're prepared to do for their Fiverr, you can pay them the extra or whatever. You can negotiate with them and, and, you know, they'll go off and do your little task. So I was looking for some dancers for a video. So I've, uh, I've paid $55 on Fiverr and I've got seven dancers who I'm now editing together to make a dancey video for a track that we're working on. Now, now I think your math is a little messed up, okay? $55 is what you've spent. You've got seven dancers. Yep. All right, now divide 55 by 5, and I think you're entitled to 11 dancers if I'm doing my math correct. You would be, but as I said, some people charge extra for different things. So, you know, some people might want an extra fiver for YouTube rights or bits and pieces like ah, that. So, I see. You, know, you, you know, some of them are above a fiver, um, but from what I set myself a 50 pound budget, as in 50 pounds, proper money. And um, I've spent thirty-seven pound fifty. Yeah, I think you, you probably you probably actually uh, sent more to Pinky because out in the chat room, Pinky is saying that everything he does contains nudity, so he probably charges more for that. Well, I mean, you know, 
that's <laughs> that's probably why he's not on fire. Right? You know, if everything he does is contains nudity, he's getting kicked off all the time. Yeah. But you know, it's just, it's an interesting little project. So um, I'm, I'll be happy to roll that out. When is it's that ready. what the kids call it today? Being kicked off? But I. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was now <laughs> whacking off in my tool shed. I'm sorry. I sorry. just had to throw that in there. No, Andrea's not here today, Patty. By the way, hello to Patty. And Patty says, just for the record, Ian, she does celebrate St. George. Want to say hello to guest 327 out there as well. Welcome. Hello, hello to everyone in the chat room. Welcome to Fantasy Island. I know. Glad to see Pinky's back this week because this place was just a mess. Yeah, Pinky is back, and he was a busy camper, and we'll find out more about that in a little bit. But first of all, I want to meet everybody else on the panel. I want to go down to the English Riviera and uh, talk with James. James, how are you doing, my friend? Everything going all right with you? Yeah, I'm all right, Rich. It's uh, good to be on the show, especially since it's our 200th episode. That's uh, pretty exciting. The weather's yeah, been nice down here. You're, you're the uh, only one excited about that. What was that? I'm the only one that's excited <laughs> yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, everybody else, it's like another day, and James is, man, it's 200. You see, there's a reason for this, right? Because James is fresh blood on the show. You know, when James has done 200 shows with Rich, he'll feel the I'll same be sick way. sick of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Happy 200th birthday. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, uh, James, what's been going on on the Riviera? I know that uh, in England, it's supposedly uh, warmer than anything else in the world. Climate change has yep. hit England all over the place. You guys are virtually dropping dead from the heat in the streets. So It's been, it's been a warm weekend, but I haven't tanned as much as I did that episode when I looked red, which is probably <laughs> just as well. Well, you're not uh, red, so that's good. Yeah, I've managed to get a sort of balance on, on the uh, sunbathing this time. Last time, I spent a bit too much time in the sun. It looked like the contrast had gone wrong. But uh, everything's good <laughs> down here. Uh, just trying to think if I've got much news. No, not particularly. But one, one thing is, I'm actually really surprised it's St. George's Day coming up because it's not something that's really very well advertised. In England, and only amongst uh, actually, probably probably best not to go there. It's <laughs> it's one of those things that doesn't really get I'm, celebrated I'm, a great deal. I'm waiting for you to dig yourself a hole here. So I, you know, we're what, not going to save you. That's what I'm trying to say. What he's trying to the say less, is the, the national set of what he's trying to say is the national celebration for St George's Day over over here basically it means consuming as much english ale as possible and then starting a fight <laughs> yeah. all well right put in. <laughs> thank you well now that we know the history of it all i suppose that uh, i need to check and make sure there she is the camera is indeed working susie chase is our guest panelist susie how are you it's great to see you again I'm great. How are you? And as you would say, Rich, I'm pleased as punch <laughs> to be on the 200th episode. Now, you got to tell everybody this story. Now, we, we, we know Susie. We've known Susie for a long time. Susie is our, uh, our 2013 panelist <laughs> of the year, for those of you who don't remember or may not have been watching the show that long. But you're, you're actually from the Midwest originally. You're from Kansas Yes. And you're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. No, I'm not. Uh, it's crazy. I'm I'm kind of half Kansan, half New Yorker. Now, what was the biggest change for you going from the Midwest, Kansas, and uh, to New York? I mean, it's got to be a huge night and day difference. It was huge. There, uh, there was a lot of crying <laughs> at first. Um, but the main thing were... Uh, the people at the grocery store, they, they wouldn't say, hey, Susie, how you doing? What's going on? How's your family? How's it going? Blah, blah, blah. They, would, they wouldn't even speak to you. So I was kind of shocked when I first came here going to the grocery store. Yeah, no, I can imagine that. Uh, I know that uh, everything here in the Midwest is a lot different. You know, I, I lived in the South for a long time, and I know that the big difference between the Midwest and the South is everything is at a snail's pace. Yes. In the South, yeah. in the Midwest, it's a little bit 
faster, but probably not nearly as fast as New York. Right. People don't have time to talk in New York. Yeah. In, in, in the South, it's not unusual to wait 20 minutes at a, a drive through window for, for food. Yeah, that's when I turn into the New Yorker. And when I say, come on, come on, let's hurry it up here, people. And then, then they turn the mic off or get your order wrong. Right. <laughs> or spit on it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Worst they can do here in, in the Midwest is either spit on it or put rabbit droppings or something like that, you know. <laughs> So, all right, now everybody needs to know a little bit of information about you, Susie. You started podcasting back in 2003. Yes. This is quite a while ago, quite a, quite a thing you have going on here. Now, you are the undisputed queen of soul music when it comes to podcasting. Am I correct yes. in that? Yes. And uh, you've started the GrooveRadio.com back in 2005. Tell us about how that came about. Um, I just felt like there was a need in radio. They, they weren't playing old R&B and a lot of old R&B B-sides that I love, like the B-side of Earth, Wind & Fire or... Aretha Franklin. I mean, it, it was all the very well-known ones. So I start, I wanted my podcast to be the Earth, Wind & Fire tunes that you weren't really familiar with. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, there's a lot of great music on B-sides that actually probably are more popular than the A-sides. Yes, exactly. So you got involved uh, in podcasting through iTunes. You actually, was it a uh, actually a podcast podcast as we know it today or was it more of a uh, online radio as we know it today it was itunes radio back in 2003 okay so and it was it was actually a radio station there available in itunes right yes and, and there were different genres and so i hooked up with this guy and his genre was called midnight soul so I would email him my shows in MP3 format, which took forever back then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No it doubt. was <laughs> so laborious. Um, so that's how that started. Now, you do still every week a show at the Trophy Bar. How did you get started with the Trophy Bar? How did you get started doing this? Well, um, I did my podcast for a long time just in my home studio, but I kind of wanted to get out since I'm in New York City and DJ live. Um, so I started at Trophy Bar in 05, I think, yeah, 2005. And I did every Saturday night, but recently I've been doing every first Saturday. And yeah. that's where I record my podcast. Now, this is in Brooklyn, right? So if people uh -huh. want to come down and see you do your thing, they can go to Brooklyn to the Trophy Bar. Yep. And uh, if they say they heard it on MSI, can they get like a, a free drink or something maybe? Exactly. Or a high five. A high five is probably <laughs> less expensive for the bar and everybody else involved. So. Right. Yeah, that's great. I think everybody should go to the Trophy Bar then. All right. Yes. Now, you won the... Uh, yearly award we give out for our uh, best guest panelist in 2013. Now, we, we tease you about this. Uh, last time you were on the show, we teased you mercil mercilessly about it. You know, the, the trophy was solid gold and the whole nine yards, you know. But did you actually open up the base to the trophy to find the hidden golden coin? <laughs> no. No. Ian, you, you did put the hidden golden <laughs> coin in there, right? Yeah, yeah, of course I did, yeah. Okay, I was just checking. <laughs> it's just very, he? very well hidden. Yeah, there you go. I'll keep looking. I mean, seriously, though, uh, Susie, you know, you, you were guest of the year for 2013. How did that change your life? It, I, 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 I can't tell you how it – I mean, it's – as I said, I cannot walk out of my apartment building with someone without someone saying, hey, Susie, best guest of the year, 2013. And now I get taunted with what happened to 2014. So it's tough. It's tough being me. <laughs> well, you're going to have to you're going to have to start a campaign for 2015. You know, I know. You, you got to do it just like what Hillary Clinton's doing. Get yourself a van 
and, and start go to across, Chipotle. Go to Chipotle. I think you <laughs> yes. probably should hit every Chipotle across the country. Yes. Look, every indie musician is a champion. You could be that champion. And I'll be 215 pounds by after all the fast food. Well, yeah, but at least you're going around in a van, so you're not like having to walk. So it's all yeah, good. Yeah. It's all That's good. That's a plus. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, have you ever played beer pong? The reason why I ask this, yes. I ask this because a uh, box of crap out in the chat room is talking about his beer pong escapades. And uh, with I, me? Pardon? With me? I, no, I don't know if it's with you or not. He said he got wet last night because uh, he was playing beer pong. So apparently either someone was very forcefully throwing this ping pong ball or he's just a very sloppy drinker. <laughs> I, I don't know which. Now, I don't think it's good if you get wet during beer pong. I don't think it is either. Not now, a good sign. Now, Pat, hey, hang on. About, yeah, go on. Pat, I'm going to say, Pat, yeah, Pat, Patty says. Yeah, Patty is in the uh, chat room and she's apparently watching your video shot very very closely she's noticed an anomaly that you might not be aware of and might want to take action on apparently your place is either haunted or one of your pillows <laughs> is possessed or something like that because a pillow behind you apparently is moving i is it's my, it's our kitten okay well there you go patty it's her kitten it's alive <laughs> well no our kitten's asleep i don't know no, I don't think anything's moving. Uh, there you are, Patty. You're going crazy. It's all Patty, you're losing it. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Now, uh, I want to ask you one more question before we get to the music. And th this is one of the important questions, Susie. No kidding around here or anything like that. The, uh, the Groove Radio, the longest-running soul music podcast in the world... In the world. And rated number one. No, yes. So what's next? What do you got planned? Well, it, funny you should ask, Rich. So this is my new podcast coming next, Cookery by the Book in the Fall. And I'm going to be interviewing cookbook authors. You go, Now, are you actually going to have them cooking on the podcast? Or are you talking no. with them about what they're cooking? No. Okay. So it's going to be like a virtual paging through their book. And I, as a home cook, will make something out of their cookbook before the show. And we'll talk about it. If it was a huge failure, if, if it was great. Now, of uh, course, you're opening yourself up, you know, by doing this. Because if you have a problem with a recipe, well, they'll say, well, Susie, it was just <laughs> that you did it wrong. Yeah, it might be a comedy show. <laughs> okay, well, there, there's, there is that. Now, yes. uh, so, all right. Now, let me ask you then. Uh, this is going to be something you're starting in the fall. Uh, yes. Cookery by the book. And, uh, but you already got the URL. Great to hear I that. Do. Now, um, is this, uh, are you going to be doing the taste test of the things that you create from their recipes? Oh, yes, I'm going to serve my husband and my eight-year-old. Oh, well, this is a great thing to see if they actually, uh, the recipes are actually worth anything at all then. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, if an eight-year-old oh. likes it, everybody's going to like it. Yes. Here's I'd like to step in here and make a suggestion. Go ahead, Ian. Well, we have a budding chef among us, don't we, Rich? We, we actually do, and I was just going to get to that. And, you know, our budding chef, also our janitor, he's very good at cleaning. Uh, but we hear he's quite good at cooking as well because he's won a prize recently, hasn't he? He, he was actually in a, uh, a samurai chef style contest this past week, which is why he was unable to join us during the broadcast. And uh, the main ingredient was something, as with any samurai chef show, say that three times <laughs> fast. <laughs> Have a drink, Rich. Have yeah, a drink. It's, it's kind of like well, a, beer pong. An, it's an Irish show now. It's a Shamurai <laughs> chef. But uh, the Samurai chef show uh, was uh, a secret ingredient, and the secret ingredient was pork belly. <gasps> yeah, I know. It's, a, again, a Midwest kind of thing, right, Susie? Yes. All right. Or Asian. 
Uh, exactly. Either way, Midwest and Asian, it's all the same. Yes. It really is. So uh, anyway, Pinky was in this contest, and he had the uh, great a great time, apparently. He had uh, the opportunity to create a garlic black beans with a braised pork belly and barbecue sauce foam dish. Oh, wow. I know. I would have just barbecued the pork belly and thrown a can of pork and beans along with it and called it done. But that's So did the, he win? He actually came in second place, and we have oh. a picture. Let's take a look at this picture of Pinky at the contest cooking up a storm. Now, I'm not sure which one is Pinky, if he's the one with the highfalutin hairdo, the one in the glasses, <laughs> or the one kind of looking all pissed off in the corner. <laughs> And I, That's a crowded kitchen. Yeah, and they all have matching uniforms, too. So we'll, we'll find out from Pinky which one he is. And Pinky's the one on the, on the end, far right. On the end, not the grumpy guy, but the other guy in the glasses. Yeah, it's far right in the glasses. That's, that's Pinky. All right, well, there you go. Well, congratulations to Pinky yeah. on coming in second place. And uh, I certainly wish you would have... Uh, Overnighted FedEx or something, some of that, uh, some of that to us would have been good to taste it, you know, try it out. Maybe we can get him to remake it and send it to us. Yeah, UPS, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Something just so we can try it out and we'll, we'll let you know if it's any good. I mean, it could, one thing is making it look good, making it taste good is something totally different, right? Right, yes. Susie. That was his cooking team, apparently, he was with. Ah, his cooking team. All right, well, cool for the cooking team. Tell the guy on the end to lighten up a little bit, okay? <laughs> and, <laughs> no, seriously, though. He was he was the Gordon Ramsay of the group. That that's Yeah. There you go. That's, somebody's got to do it, I suppose. All right, and speaking of got to do it, we got to play some music. And we have three songs that we need to get to today. Ian, uh, the witness statements from last week, anything out of the ordinary we should know about regarding those? No, pretty much everyone agreed with us, so on every aspect, so an easy one, that is. All right, and just to remind everybody, last week, the Song of the Week winner was Jessica's theme band. It Happened Again was the song, and uh, it was an almost unanimous decision. It was a two-to-one split decision on that. So we do have three songs to get to today. Let's do them right now. I hold the titles in my hand and had just tossed them down. So we're going to listen to those right now. So everybody, please enjoy the song number one on today's Music Scene Investigation. Here it is, everybody. This is song number one. Enjoy.
there it is. That is track number one on the broadcast today. We're going to go to our panelists, find out what they think about it, starting out with Mr. Ian Husbands. Ian, track number one, what do you think about it? I like this. That's a good start to the show. Really nice groove, uh, good, good funky vibe to it. Very upbeat. It was kind of like uh, the Happy Mondays or Black Grape meets Moby. And, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of time for it. It's, it's got a real nice production level. I did find the whole thing was a little bit hot. But I kind of guess that's what you expect from a track of this sort of genre. You know, it, the beats seem to be battling with the vocals in places. Again, just a bit more space, and that would really sound nice. Lots of good production techniques going on. Kept the uh, ears interested all the way through. Dropping things out, bringing things in, bringing something slightly new in or changing a part slightly. And uh, good hook. I like the vocals. Um, yeah, I've not got a lot bad to say about this, except it is a tad hot in my opinion. A bit of a bit over compression going on. Um, it is a trend we we see a lot these days. But yeah, good arrangement, good beats, good groove. I found myself bobbing my head and tapping my foot all the way through that. Um, like the lad vocals. Uh, you know, if I was going to be really picky, more brass. Brass, brass, trumpets and, and bits and pieces in there, sort of really sort of pulling off that funk groove. But, uh, yeah, that would be the only thing I'd add. Um, like it. Like it a lot. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Over to James Anderson in the English Riviera. James, are you dancing in the yacht? Yeah, I was. I'd have to agree with Ian with a lot of the points there. Well, I agree with Ian most of the time anyway. My ears were tantalised for, for most of the track, mainly for good reasons. Uh, the one bad reason was down to the overcompression, which uh, is something that a lot of these uh, tracks we receive, they're plagued with it, unfortunately. But it's the trend and it's the way things go. It sounded very, uh, it sounded like it was being played straight off the radio actually because it was quite compressed but really enjoyed it a lot, lot of life to it. it was certainly bopping along there it's the kind of thing i'd imagine being used in advertising would be quite good to as, as a piece to advertise beer or something on the tv um what else have we got here yeah i, I don't think there's a great deal of an improvement to be made to the actual composition itself as Ian said, maybe adding some horns would be quite good. But uh, but by that, it's, it's really good. Uh, just just really the compression for me is is the problem, but something that can always be sorted out. All right. Overall, good track. All right. Well, I appreciate that, James. Thank you. And now to guest panelist of the year 2013 and the queen of soul herself, Susie Chase, Susie, what do you think about track number one? Beer commercial song. It kind of took me back to 1974. I felt like it was a real classic rock hit. Um, I loved the lead singer's voice, but I feel like his the vocals could have been a little stronger with the back with the uh, strong guitar riffs, I think production wise, they could have like tweaked the vocals a little more to, to keep it on the same level as the the strong guitar riff. But I loved it. I, th I thought it was good. All right. Well, very simple, straight to the point, all three and uh, track number one for everybody's information. Track number one is called Pop Your Heart Out. And that's by <laughs> Salme Dahlstrom, and we appreciate Salme sending that track in to Music Scene Investigation. Want to get your music in front of our panel? All you have to do is go to musicsceneinvestigation.com, click on Submit a Song at the top of the page, follow the information there. It's easy to sign up on the site. We'll take you less than a minute and a half, and you'll be submitting your music. We'll select three randomly every week for our panel to take a listen to and give their views on. All right, song number two next up on the list, everybody. Um, as long as nobody has any problems, we can go to that one right now. Here it is, everyone. Song number two on today's Music Scene Investigation. Enjoy song number two. I grew up 
up in a little shack on the poor side of the railroad tracks. Just skin and bones in dirty clothes. Killing time and kicking stones. Midnight daddy would make it home. Then it was back to work when the rooster crowed. He paid my way and sacrificed his own damn life to give me mine. Second hand dreams he wouldn't sleep till his groundwork led to the finer things. Long as I breathe those memories, hold their ground, my roots run deep. The angel on earth gave me his wings, his soul, and his second hand dreams. Daddy's a girl no more High rise job 18th floor I knew I made it when I made him proud but I gotta give credit couldn't do without his second hand dreams he wouldn't sleep till his groundwork led to the finer things long as I breathe those memories hold their ground my roots run deep the angel on earth would be track number two on the broadcast today we're going to bring our panel back in starting with james get his thoughts on track number two james well that's a great country track really good um um so one one thing that i've um the main gripe i've got with that is is the mix over anything else but we'll start off with the with the good points excellent vocals really nice guitar work some good organ elements coming in here and then in the background and I think generally a really good uh, musical performance and a good composition. Uh, as soon as it opened the guitars were nice, nicely recorded, clean and crisp but then as soon as the vocal came in everything else kind of got nudged back in the mix a bit and I think it's probably because whoever mixed it being, they, they probably became tired when they mixed it, their ears probably got tired and they thought it sounded good. Because the thing is, it's a great, great track. And I can imagine it's one of those things where you'd keep listening over and over and you'd kind of get into the groove and forget about the levels, which I think is what happened. Um, the backing vocals sort of got lost, the really good organ backing got lost in the mix. And um, the electric guitars did a bit, which I thought was a bit, a bit strange. Um, the, the thing I didn't didn't like was the drums. So um, the kick and the snare sounded a little bit like a microphone being unplugged. You know, when you get that weird um, click sound. So I think they could have been adjusted a little. But overall, fantastic track. I'd just love to hear it mixed and polished perfectly, and then it would sound bloody brilliant. 
All right. Well, James, I appreciate your thoughts on that. Over to Susie Chase. Susie, track number, that was a drum. Was that what that was, James? <laughs> that was an imitation. All right. Okay. As long as we're clear on that. Susie, what do you think about track number two? I liked it too. I, um, I liked the guitars. It did. It felt a little muddled to me because um, I would have liked to have hear the, heard the background vocals a little more. But all in all, it was a good track. I liked it. All right. Well, very cool. Short and you're always very succinct and to the point. I like that <laughs> yeah. about you. Don't get me mad. No. <laughs> there you go. Don't get her mad, everybody. You heard it here first. Ian, track number one. What do you think? I mean, track number two. My <laughs> fault. Sorry. Track number one. I like track number one. Yeah, that was good. We've talked about that, though. Can we <laughs> yeah, do we did. Two? We did. Let's go ahead and go to move on. Let's move right. on. But secondly, what what makes Susie mad? I I don't I don't want to find out. Yeah. I do. Anyway, yeah. um, track three. Track, no, track number two. Yeah. Okay. I just I'm going to start the hashtag blame Bon Jovi. I mean, you know, seriously, this is a great track. It's well written. It's well produced. Yes, the drum sound is questionable in places and rather set back, especially that snare. And all you've got is that click of the um, the kick drum coming through, as James said. Um, but, you know, good performances here. That girl's got a great voice. The acoustic sound was to die for. Really, really like that. Um, but, you know, it is Bon Jovi, Blades of Glory. Um, and apparently that's the modern-day country sound, according to Pinky in the chat. And uh, Boxo over there as well. So, yeah, hashtag blame Bon Jovi. You can imagine if someone like bon, John Bon Jovi or Brett Michaels from Poison was seeing this on a sort of one of their sort of albums in the 80s, it would have been a hit. Um, from my point of view, I'm not big into country. You know, it's, it's slick. It's well done, well performed. Is there anything new and jumping out at me as a brilliant example of modern country? Well, it's a good example of modern country, but it's nothing new or fresh in my book. That's my only problem with it. It's very well done. Great, well performed, well mixed, well produced. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. It's not the most standout of songs. All right. Well, I appreciate that. And by the way, Susie, a couple of people in the chat room are uh, speculating on what makes you mad. Uh, a bad souffle recipe, perhaps. Um, they're also saying that Susie gets mad when folks don't say hello and how's the family at the market. Yes. So there you exactly now everybody knows everybody now knows what <laughs> makes Susie mad track number two is by Tanya Marie Harris it's called secondhand dreams we appreciate Tanya sending that track into music scene investigation all right one more track the time is just moving right along and so is the music we have one more track right now on the broadcast we're going to listen to track number three right now so Put your seat belts on. Here we go. This is track number three on today's music scene investigation. Enjoy track number three, everyone. Hey, Johnny, I know you are afraid and you are alone. The road Driving you on your pop and pills, it's killing your song. And I'll be watching you, watching you, watching you under the moon. Now be watching you, watching you, watching you. I'll see you through. My name is June. I have loved you since that bright day when skies were blue. What you say is true, I need your eyes to see me through. I too have been watching you, watching you, watching you for so long. Take my heart, lead my soul to the promised land. Help me hold on Revive my song Someday our lives will end When we reach round the bend To the end of our dream But from now until then We'll sing together our tune 
just Johnny and June. Someday our lives will end when we reach round the bend to the end of our dreams. But from now until then, we'll sing together our tune. Just Johnny and June. That's track number three on the broadcast today. It was a short and sweet one. Track number three, let's start things out with Susie. Find out what she thought. Susie, what do you think about track number three? Okay, I think my tracks are a little discombobulated. This this was the slowed down acoustic one, right? Yes, indeed. Okay, good. Then I'm right on. I loved it. I uh, I thought it was really fresh. I, th- I liked the girls' vocal on here. I really don't have any critique about this. Um, I thought it was nice, and I thought it was something I could listen to. I want to to. make sure you heard the right one. This is the one with the girl and the guy singing. And the guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, cool. Yes. Um, Yeah, I liked it a lot, and I think I could listen to this over and over and over again. All right, well, there you have it. Susie Chase likes track number three. I like track number three, too. Ian, what do you think? Well, I'm going to see... Yeah, I'm going to Ian. What do you think about track number three? Every week you forget me the last round. (laughs) The order order just messes me up. What can I say? 200 shows and you still haven't got it right. Uh, Wait 200 more. I probably won't get it right then either. I feel feel 200 shows left out. Well, let's try 201. It'll be perfect. Okay. (laughs) Right, let's... um... I liked the girl's vocal a lot. And I liked the sort of folky rhythmic thing going on with the guitar. Needed to be recorded slightly better. Um, But, yeah, I liked the girl singing and and the guitar strumming was nice. And I thought, oh, yeah, this could really go somewhere. I hope she's brought some production into this. I hope there's going to be some drums and maybe some strings. And as this builds, it's going to sort of just grow bigger. And then this guy came in and she disappeared. And I felt a bit lost because, yeah, she's got a great voice. Unfortunately, I'm going to go out there and say, look, man, that recording of you was not good. Um, you're pitchy, you're all over the place. You're a lot louder in the mix than she was. Uh, you kind of took over the song there. Now, I see this is a Johnny and June. It's a ballad thing. I understand that. You need the male vocalist. But sometimes you, you've got to sort of step back and look at how this is going to go. If you want people to take this track seriously, then you need to get someone who's going to either hold that tune better or put a lot more work in yourself. You're obviously working with a very good talent in that young lady. Um, you need to match that up so that the song sounds like it's together. It just sounds like sort of some girls recorded this acoustically in her bedroom and sent it off from the internet, and some guys put something over the top of it badly. Um, and, you know, just because it's not a big production... Just because it's only an acoustic track doesn't mean you shouldn't strive to get it as right as possible, even at the demo stage, before you start building things into it. That vocal, the, the, you know, her voice is lovely, good little, like the sort of darkness she had in, in the melody as well. But then the male vocals, just it did, it spoiled the song for me, I'm afraid. All right. Well, thank you very much for your thoughts there, Ian. And now let's go to James and get his as well. James, track number three. Well, it's, it started off well, good guitar, really great female vocal, and then I thought the sampling rate had gone funny because the guy's vocal seemed to be a little bit out of tune in places and was, wasn't was up to scratch with the uh, with the girl's voice. Um, when, when you've got such basic instrumentation, when you've got a small band, I think you really need to focus on getting the best possible sound and... Uh, I don't think they did that. They needed to spend more time getting the right guitar sound and focusing more on getting the vocals slightly better recorded. I mean, when, when it's such a small band, you need to hear everything well. Um, it's, it was just a real letdown that the male vocal didn't match up to standard. Otherwise, that would have been really, really, really nice, sort of, as people are saying in the chat room, Johnny Cash <laughs> to start tribute but uh overall great effort 
just just needs work on a little bit of uh, recording technique and uh, the male voice. All right. Well, thank you very much for your thoughts as well. Track number three. It's called uh, sl- it's called Ballad of Johnny and June. Imagine that, and it's by Sleeper One. We appreciate their sending that track in to Music Scene Investigation as well. Now, this is the time of the show where we're going to take and toss things over to our panelists so they can si- decide on a song of the week. That song of the week will then go on next month for our Band of the Month competition, which is brought to you by Landar.com, Mastering Made Easy. And uh, they will potentially win a prize package from our sponsor, Landar.com, and our partners, Indie Music Bus Worldwide, Indie Radio, Indie Music Coalition, and these Live to Play. Uh, It's just an amazing group of people we work with and partner with, and we're proud to have them on supporting indie musicians around the world just like we do and everybody in our audience does so uh can't thank them enough now gentlemen and lady or should i say gal gal <laughs> gal <laughs> private inside joke for the show if you were here you you knew it anyway you guys need to decide on a song of the week so i'm going to turn things over to you and let you make your decision oh, i say ladies first oh, oh gal first um, I love number one. Any particular reason? Because <laughs> it was my favorite. <laughs> okay. No, um, I I don't know. I just I I think that what we're missing today is that kind of old classic Rocky feeling, and I think that that they hit the nail on the head with number one. All right, well, Ian I James. Agree. I I agree. I'm 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 you know. Number two was a really good track, really well produced, really slick, but it just wasn't quite anything new to me. Whereas number one had a fresh sound, it was good production. I think all that we need to do is tighten that mix up a little bit and it's done. So uh, definitely number one. James? I'm tied between between one and two. I mean, they're they're both very good tracks. They both have uh, mix and production issues. I think two has probably more mix issues than one. One's okay from from the mix standpoint, but the actual mastering probably worse. I'd say number two. All right. Well, there you have it. Another split decision on Music Scene Investigation. Of course, we want to know what your thoughts are out in our audience as well, whether you're listening to this live or in the recorded fashion, you go to musicsceneinvestigation.com slash witness as Ian holds up a uh, <laughs> keep calm and I can't read the bottom part. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> so go to musicsceneinvestigation.com slash witness. Let us know your thoughts. This week's song of the week, a Pop Your Heart Out by Sammy Dalstrom. Congratulations on being selected Song of the Week. Susie, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. It's, it's always, always fun. It's great to have you join us anytime you can because you're just a, a spark in an otherwise dull day. Thank you. <laughs> not, you, uh, I'm not, you absolute I'm, smoothie. Uh, I'm not <laughs> saying that MSI is dull in any way, shape, or form. It's just Susie brightens everybody's day, right? Uh. Am I, I right? I agree. And besides, I agree, but there's ways of saying besides, it. Man. Come she on. has a ghost pillow for crying out loud. I know. Now I'm a little freaked out. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's great. It's it's awesome stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't go wrong when you have a ghost in the house, is what I'm saying. You, you can. And there you are. It's well, a, happy two hundredth. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate yeah. that. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to go 200 more. You never know. Thanks to everybody out in the audience for being here as well as Ian and James. As always, great to have you guys on board with us. And uh, next week, we certainly hope you'll come back and join us once again when Ian is going to tell us who's on the broadcast with us. Ian? It's a surprise. That means he doesn't have a clue. <laughs> That's okay. I don't either. I, I, I didn't look. I'm sad that it's way. Tra- it's, a, it's a trade secret, man. Oh, well, there you go. If you want to find out who's going to be on the show with us, go to musicsceneinvestigation.com. Usually there's someone listed on the broadcast schedule unless we forgot to do it. 
So you can take a look and find out for yourself. Right now, however, we're going to play out with our song of the week, Pop Your Heart Out by Salme Destrom. So here it is, Salme Dalstrom and Pop Your Heart Out, our song of the week. Thanks for being here, everybody. We'll see you next time on Music Scene Investigation. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, bye-bye. Yeah.